here is the last lesson of the trigonometry unit in the grade 10 math course. We're going to learn about cosine law. So far in this unit, you've learned about four tools that you can use to solve for sides or angles in a right triangle. You've learned that Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA are tools that can only be used when you're working with a right angle triangle. And then you learned that there are two other tools that you can use, sine law and cosine law, that can be used with right angle triangles, but can also be used with triangles that don't have a 90 degree angle, and we call those oblique triangles. You've already learned what sine law is and how to use it, and in this lesson we're going to focus on what cosine law is and how to use that. Here's the table that summarizes the four rules that we can use to solve for sides or angles in a triangle, what they solve for, and when you're allowed to use them. If you have an oblique triangle and you're trying to solve for a side or angle, your only options are sine law and cosine law. And like I said, in this lesson, we're going to focus in on cosine law. Now, there are two versions of cosine law. One of the versions allows you to solve for a side in a triangle if you know the other two sides and the angle contained by those two sides. The other version of cosine law allows you to solve for an angle inside a triangle if you know the length of all three sides of the triangle. Before we start learning how to use these two versions of cosine law, let me take you through a proof that shows where they come from. So I've given you a triangle, triangle ABC drawn to the right. It says to draw CD perpendicular to AB, and CD is going to be the altitude or height of triangle ABC. There we go. I drew line segment CD. It is perpendicular to side AB, and we will call it the height of the triangle. So I'll label with H. In the big triangle, triangle ABC, I could also label the sides based on its opposite angle. So side A is opposite from angle A, side B is opposite from angle B, and side C, which would be this whole side length here, is opposite from angle C. Now I drew it like that because we're actually going to be focusing on the smaller triangles inside triangle ABC in this proof. So I'm going to break side C into two parts. AD I'll call X, and then DB would be C minus whatever X is. So I'll call it C minus X. Now let's focus on triangle ACD. This small triangle, I'm going to be able to get two expressions that are gonna be useful in my proof. This small triangle, triangle ACD, is a right angle triangle. And I know that in any right angle triangle, Pythagorean theorem is true. So the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides, so x squared plus h squared, would be equal to the square of the longest side, b squared. Since it's a right angle triangle, I could also use SOHCAHTOA to write a relationship between any angle and two of the sides in the triangle. So I'm going to actually write the cosine ratio from angle A, and you'll see later why I'm choosing that. So cosine from angle A would be equal to the adjacent side, which we've called X, over the hypotenuse, which we called side B. And let me actually isolate this expression for X by multiplying the B to the other side. So I have B times cosine of A, equals x. Now we're going to shift our focus to the triangle on the right, triangle CDB. Triangle CDB is also a right angle triangle, so I know Pythagorean theorem holds true for that triangle as well. So I could say the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides, so c minus x all squared plus h squared would be equal to the square of the longest side, which we called a, so it's equal to a squared. Now I'm going to expand that binomial c minus x that is being squared. That would give me c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. And I still have that plus h squared equals a squared. Now if we look back to what I wrote in blue that we got from the other triangle, I see that x squared plus h squared is equal to b squared. And in the expression I'm working with down here, I see an x squared plus h squared. I can replace that with b squared. And lastly, I know that x is equal to b times cos a. So I can replace the x that I have in this expression with b cos a. And now I'm just going to rearrange some of the terms so it gets put into a format that we're going to most often recognize cosine law as being in. So I'm going to say a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cosine of angle A. Now in this formula, it allows us to solve for a side length, we'll call that A, as long as we know the other two sides of the triangle, we'll call that B and C, and the angle contained by those two sides, which we'll call angle A. 
Now this formula could be rearranged to isolate angle A if we wanted to be able to find, use cosine law to find an angle. And if I rearranged this to isolate angle A, I would say cosine of A equals, I would move all of the terms to the other side. So A squared is already there. And then I would be subtracting B squared, subtracting C squared, and then I would be dividing the negative 2 times B times C. In this version of the formula, it'll allow us to solve for any angle we'll call angle A if we know all three of the sides. So let's write those formulas here. So cosine law, the relationship between two sides and their contained angle in any acute triangle ABC is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine of angle A. And like I said, this formula allows us to solve for a side length if we know the other two sides and the angle contained by those two sides. The relationship between the sides and one of their opposite angles in any acute triangle ABC is cosine A equals A squared minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2 B C. In this version of the formula, it allows us to solve for an angle if we know all three side lengths in a triangle. Now in these formulas, our triangles aren't always going to have side lengths that are labeled as A, B, and C. It's just important to recognize the relationship between the variables in these two formulas. In the top formula, the one that allows us to solve for a side length, notice that the angle that is used in the formula is always the one opposite from the side length we are solving for. It is the angle that is contained by the two known sides. In the version of cosine law that allows us to solve for an angle, Notice in the numerator, the first side that we are using is the side opposite from the angle we are solving for. If we wanted to solve for angle B, we would use a different version of this that would start with B squared and then subtract A squared and C squared. And then also if we look at the denominator, there are only two sides. They match up with the two sides that are being subtracted from the side opposite from the angle that we're solving for. So let's go ahead and practice using cosine law to find a side length. So I'll rewrite cosine law here. And let's see how it works. In example one, it says find the measure of the indicated side. Part A, it says find the length of side A. If I'm looking for side A, we'll notice what we know about this triangle. We know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides. So cosine law allows us to solve for the third side. So I would say a squared equals, and now I don't know if it's useful to write out a version of the formula that involves these letters. It'll actually match this version exactly. Um, I think it's better if we just start following the pattern so you don't get so reliant on a, b's, and c's, and you just start looking at the relationship between what we know and what we don't know. Um, if we're looking for a side in the, in the triangle, we do that side squared equals the sum of the squares of the two known sides. So I'll say 18 squared plus 21 squared, minus two times those side lengths, times cosine of the angle contained by those two sides. That means the angle between the two sides, which is 61 degrees. And now when you're evaluating this, we can get our calculator to evaluate the whole right side. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode when you are doing this. And remember, this is what a squared is equal to, 398.4839271. If we want the length of side a, we'll have to isolate a by doing the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting. So we'll need to square root that answer to find the actual length of side a. So it's about 19.96. Notice I didn't do any rounding until the very end of the answer, until after I had square rooted it. That improves our accuracy of our final result. But notice I did still indicate that this is an approximate answer with my approximately equal symbol. For part B and C, notice in both of these triangles, what we know are two sides and the angle contained by the two sides. So what cosine law will allow us to do is find the length of the third side, and that's what each of the questions is asking us to find. So in part B, it says find the length of side D, that's right here. If I want the length of that third side of the triangle, I know that the length of that side squared would be equal to, if I follow cosine law, the sum of the squares of the other two sides, the order of those two don't matter, so 4.7 squared plus 3.3 .3 squared, minus 2 times the length of those sides, 4.7 times 3.3, .3, times 
times cosine of the angle contained by those two sides, which is 39 degrees. And then if I want the length of side D, I'll evaluate the right side of that, and then I'll make sure to square root the answer. And I get a length of about 2.98 centimeters. Part C, we're trying to find the length of side P, that's right here. To find the length of a triangle, I know that that length squared would be equal to, using cosine law, the sum of the squares of the other two sides, the order of those don't matter, minus two times each of those two sides, 4.9 and 6.4, times cosine of the angle contained by those two sides, which is 55. I'll evaluate the right side, and then remember to square root it to get the length of side P. I get about 5.38 centimeters. Let's now see how we use cosine law to solve for an angle when we know all three sides of a triangle. So cosine of any angle is equal to its opposite side squared minus the squares of the other two sides. The order of those last two sides don't matter, but make sure you put those last two sides down in the denominator being multiplied by negative two. So if we look at example two, notice we have a triangle where we know all three sides. It asks us to find the measure of angle A. If we were trying to find the measure of angle A, I know cosine of that angle would be equal to, I need to use its opposite side. So I'll need to use the side opposite from A first. So eight, so eight squared minus the squares of the other two. It doesn't matter the order of the other two. I'll just do 10 squared minus nine squared over negative two times those other two sides, 10 and nine. The only important thing about this formula is that the side opposite from the angle we're finding comes first in the top, then the other two, and those other two go down in the bottom being multiplied by negative two. So what we have on the right side is the cosine ratio of angle A. If we want angle A, we will have to do inverse cosine of this ratio. And instead of rewriting that whole thing, let me simplify the numerator and denominator. The numerator is negative 117, and the denominator is negative 180. Now, since numerator and denominator are both negative, I could have just canceled those out and wrote that as a positive ratio. And when I type it on my calculator here, that's what I'll do. So I'll do inverse cos of 117 over 180. I get 49.46. So angle A is about 49.46 degrees. Let's try this a few more times. Let's find the measure of angle B this time. If I want the measure of angle B, I know that cosine of that angle would be equal to its opposite side squared. So I have to start with 12. So 12 squared minus the squares of the other two. The order of these two don't matter. So I'll do 10 squared minus 13 squared all over negative two times the second two sides, 10 and 13. If I want angle B, I'm going to have to find inverse cosine of that ratio. And let me simplify it. The numerator simplifies to negative 125, and the denominator simplifies to negative 260. And then I'll evaluate this by doing the inverse cosine of 125 over 260. And it's 61.26 degrees. Part C asks us to find angle K. I noticed that I know th all three sides of this triangle, so I could use cosine law to solve for angle K. I know that cosine of angle K would be equal to its opposite side squared, so 13 squared, minus the squares of the other two, so minus 14 squared minus 16 squared, over negative two times the second two sides, 14 and 16. So angle K would be equal to inverse cosine of that ratio. Let me simplify the numerator and denominator. And then on my calculator, I will do inverse cosine of that ratio. And I get about 50.82 degrees. Our last practice of using cosine law to solve for an angle. This triangle actually doesn't have letters at the vertices, but it indicates that we wanna solve for this angle right here. 
So what I can do, I know that if I want that angle and I know all three sides of the triangle, I know that cosine of that angle would be equal to the side opposite from that angle, so 15 squared minus the squares of the other two, 10 squared minus 16.5 squared over negative two times the second two sides, 10 and 16.5. And then to solve for the angle, when I know the ratio, I do inverse cosine of the ratio. Let me simplify it. And then on your calculator, you can evaluate what the angle is equal to by doing inverse cosine of the ratio. It's about 63.5 degrees. So hopefully you now know how to use cosine law to solve for a side or angle. Example three doesn't actually give us a diagram of a triangle. So I think what I'll do is I will just draw a triangle. Now the proportions of this aren't going to match what it gives me, but at least I have something that I can label and go off of. It says we have triangle D E F. So let me just call the angles D E and F. It tells me the length of D. So that's across from angle D would be 4.9 centimeters. The length of F would be 6.2 and angle E is 64 degrees. And it says to solve the triangle. That means to find all missing sides and angles. Now, based on what the question gives me, I see that I know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides. So my only option for my starting point would be to solve for the third remaining side, side E, by using cosine law. I know that that side squared would be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus two times those two sides, times cosine of the angle contained by the two of them. I'll evaluate the right side, and then square root the answer. I get 5.98 centimeters, so I'll label E 5.98. I have two more pieces of information I need to find. I need to find the other two angles. Now that we have four pieces of information of this triangle, I have a couple options for how I could find angle D or angle F. I, I can't use Sokotoa because I don't know if this is a right angle triangle yet, but I could use sine law or cosine law. There's enough information to use either. Since this lesson is on cosine law, I might as well use that. Let's find angle F this time. If I'm looking for angle F, and I know all three sides of the triangle, I know cosine of angle F would be equal to the side opposite from angle F, so 6.2 squared, minus the squares of the other two, so minus 4.9 squared minus 5.98 squared, over negative two times those second two sides, 4.9 and 5.98. To get angle F, I'll do inverse cosine of the ratio that I have on the right. And I get 68.7 degrees. And then the last thing I need to know is angle D. The easiest way to find angle D would be to know that the angles in a triangle add to 180. So to fit, get angle D, do 180 minus the two angles that we know, 64 and 68.7. And I get about 47.3 degrees. There we go, that triangle is solved. And you're now done the trigonometry unit for grade 10 math.